once you've created your wafer and gotten it all, all the chips in there all shiny and, and cool, the next thing you do, excuse me, is you cut that wafer up into the individual little chips. And I've got some examples here. So here's a wafer. Um, these are pretty small chips, so you may or may not be able to see, but, but each one has been cut apart. You can see some of them have been pulled off. And this is just like a rubbery piece of um, sticky stuff that keeps that wafer together so that the chips don't fly all over the place. And it's in a little carrier. Here's another one that has already been cut apart, and you can see it's all fluffy. <laughs> um, but each one of those tiny little elements in there is a computer chip. So they're all cut up, ready to go into the next step, which is to protect these little guys in a package. Um, they're very sensitive. These, everything you see that I'm using today is broken. It never worked. Um, because handling things like this would completely destroy these little guys. They're pretty sensitive. So you need to protect them. So you glue them into a package. And I have some examples here that hopefully this one's big enough that you can see. But you glue it down into something that's very strong and sturdy to protect that little chip inside. Um, this is a what's called a ceramic package, so it's you know it makes a kind of cool sound when you click on it, but it's very sturdy and very rigid. It's also very expensive. Um, the reason that you would use an expensive one is if you want to put it like near your car engine where it's really hot and plastic would melt, or if you want to put it in a nuclear power reactor, or if you want to send it into outer space, which actually is what this chip uh, was designed to do. Um, this chip is really neat. This was at a company I used to work for. This chip does amazing mathematical calculations in outer space, and it is impervious to radiation. We call it radiation hard. Because when you send these chips out, out past the atmosphere, they'll go through the Van Allen radiation belt, and all the little charged particles in that radiation belt will come right down and zap these guys and, and fry them. So we use really special secret techniques to make sure that they're protected against radiation so that they can go on beyond um, outside the universe and beyond what used to be planet Pluto. That's sad. Anyway, that's a different commentary <laughs> altogether. So the, the chip is inside the package, and you put a lid on it to protect it. Um, I have some plastic packages here. So here's a little one. These are more typical for iPads or for uh, cell phones, computers, things that don't have to go out into a harsh environment. You'll use a plastic package because it's a lot less expensive. Keep the cost down, remember. Here's a package. Here's kind of an interesting one where the um, little wires uh, poke out the sides instead of out the bottom. This is called a dip. Now, I'm not calling you a dip. This is called the dip. Dual inline package, so that's a different type of package. And they come again in all sizes. Here's some more ceramic ones. You can see different shapes and sizes. It's all up to you what you're going to do with these chips as to what package you want to, want to pick. And let me show you one if I can even see it. It is so small that, look at this one, it's fitting, you know, tiny, tiny in the palm of my hand and, uh, you know, like on, the, on your fingertip. Now, clearly, there's not as many transistors inside this package as there would be, you know, in this great big guy. But still, that's pretty phenomenal. So the package protects it from the outside world. The next thing that you need to do is you need to connect the edge of that chip to these little gold shelves, if you like, because these little shelves connect to the outside world on these, they're called pins. These are like little wires that poke out. That's how you're going to get all that electricity in and out of the chip. You're going to send electricity in on one of these wires. It's going to connect to the shelf. Tiny, tiny gold wires connect to the chip. And then the electricity is going to go around and around. You're going to do things with it. And then the electricity is going to come out on one of the other pins. And I have a picture of that coming up. So that's a really important part of connecting the chip so that the information can get in and out of it to the outside world. Here's the picture, and you can see in this diagram a little bit better where these wires are connecting from the, the little shelf down to the chip itself. Someone did ask me once, did you say gold, Karen? Like gold, real gold? I said, yeah, real gold. Wow, can I have some of your chips so I can go and recycle the gold and make some money? I'm like, well, you can, but they're so small, and the amount of gold in there really isn't worth your trouble. So don't get excited that you're going to get rich if you find old chips like I do. <laughs> so that's how the chip connects to the outside world. Thank you.